Hello everyone. So today's topic is frame buffer organization. In our previous graphics lecture, we have seen uh, uh, about the color of a pixel or intensity of a pixel. A quick recall and the topic introduction about it. Now, uh, that's the image. That's a black and white image. We also call it as monochrome image. Now, we have also discussed the value of a pixel is nothing but the intensity of the pixel or color of the pixel. So, as we can see in the image, I've got a white pixel, I've got a black, black pix pixel. So, when I am going to put a white pixel, I put the value as 1 and for a black pixel, I put the value as 0. That's for a monochrome image. Okay, to the uh, below, I have got an RGB image, that's a color image. So, the first value is uh, yellow. So, for a layman, for the end user, the color is yellow. But now, for the programmer, for the computer's memory, we have to see what is the color code for it. Now, so, uh, the main problem domain for today is where am I storing, storing the values of the pixels? That means, for the first pixel, I'm storing a 1. For the second pixel, I'm storing a 1. For the black pixel, I'm storing a 0. So, where am I storing all these things? Now, the answer is we are storing all these things in a memory location that's called as frame buffer. So, let's have a quick look on what is a frame buffer basically. So, as the name implies frame buffer, buffer is nothing but a memory and frame is a grid. So, a memory grid is a good uh, good uh, definition for a frame buffer. So frame buffer is a specialized memory location for graphics. So whenever I want to store the information of the pixels, I go in for frame buffer. Okay, so let's come to the layout of a frame buffer. So uh, the size of the frame buffer is equal to the resolution of the image. Now, I hope by now you should know the resolution of an image is nothing but the number of pixels in horizontal direction multiplied by number of pixels in vertical direction. So we have given a quick reference out here. If my image has got of size 5 cross 5, 5 pixels vertically, 5 pixels horizontally, then my frame buffer will also be of size 5 cross 5 for a single plane. Okay, so that is your structure for our frame buffer. Now, very important point to note down, frame buffer can store one bit information in one location. That means if I say the color of this pixel is yellow, Okay, so I can store only one bit information in the corresponding location in the frame buffer. Okay, so that is what is important for us to note down as of now. So if an image is of size 640 cross 480, I will have a frame buffer with 640 cross 480 locations in it in a single plane. Okay, now we come next after understanding what is frame buffer. So we start with frame buffer organization for one bit per pixel. So by now, you should know that one bit per pixel is for monochrome images. Zero is black, one is white. So what is the frame buffer organization when it is for a monochrome image? Okay, so to the right, you could see a monochrome image wherein the shaded circles are bright and the blank squares are black basically. Okay, so this is what I can see on my screen when I am done with the final product. But what happens at the back end? inside the computer is for this particular pixel that's a bright pixel what is the information stored inside the computer's memory or else in the frame buffer as i said for a monochrome image it is one bit per pixel and we have also discussed that frame buffer location every location will store only one bit information so for a monochrome image i will have only one plane in frame buffer a single plane and frame buffer as I know that I have to store either a 0 or a 1. So for a white pixel, I'm going to store a 1. For a white pixel, I'm going to store a 1. For a black pixel, I'm going to store a 0. So this is how is your frame buffer organization for a monochrome image. That means for 1 bit per pixel. So what is the frame buffer size that is required for 1 bit per pixel? Is nothing but the resolution of the image. So if my image has got size m cross n, so my frame buffer will also be of size m cross n. So that's that's it about frame buffer organization for one bit per pixel. We move on to 
what is the frame buffer organization for n greater than 1 bit per pixel now we move on to higher number of bits so what happens when i increase the number of bits as we have seen in the last lecture the moment i increase the number of bits the the number of shades of color go on increasing so one bit per pixel image has one plane and frame buffer as discussed as n increases the number of planes and frame buffer increases so for every bit my plane increases that means if i have got two bits per pixel so i'll have two planes and frame buffer if i've got three bit per pixel then i'll have three frames and uh, frame buffer so to generalize it if i've got n bit per pixel i'll require n planes and frame buffer okay so we start with when n is equal to two bits per pixel so what is the frame buffer organization for two bits per pixel so when i say two bits per pixel it is nothing but we are talking about a gray scale image and when i'm talking about a gray scale image as we have seen two bit per pixel is number of bits are two one bit for one frame so i need how many frames i need two frames okay so let us have quick look at the binary and the value for it so for two bits i need the binary is 0 0 value will be 0 decimal value 0 1 value will be 1 1 0 value will be 2 1 1 value will be 3 that means the color codes will be 0 0 code will be 0 0 1 code will be 1 one zero code will be two and one one code will be three and we have also seen that the minimum value of any color is black the maximum value of any color is white so zero color code is for black three color code is for white when n is equal to two and in between i'll have different shades of gray so we start with the first value as black next value will be a dark gray third value will be a light gray and last value will be a white pixel okay so we just have a quick look at the frame buffer organization to my right i can see an image of size 5 cross 5 so my frame buffer the size of frame will also be 5 cross 5 okay there are two planes in frame buffer because there are two bits in my for uh, two bits per pixel so i've got one plane for msb and one plane for lsb okay my first pixel is black what is the color code for black zero what is the binary code for black zero zero msb bit is zero lsb bit is zero this is how we put information in frame buffer next is a white so when it's a white the color code is three but the binary is one one so my second location will have a one here and it will have a one here okay let's move on to a lighter gray so for a lighter gray i have got color code as two the binary is one zero so let's move on to the lighter gray addressable location so this is the location so we come to this location so that's one and a zero okay let's move on to a dark gray the value is one the code is zero one so let's move on to a dark gray it is third row and second column so what am i going to insert a third row and second column i'm going to insert a zero here and i'm going to insert a one here so this is the frame buffer for two bits per pixel next we move on to frame buffer for three bit per pixel so when i say three bit per pixel now we also come to a color image so that we discuss about color images so as we have already discussed a color is a combination of red green and blue primary colors now please understand when n is equal to 3 by now you should know when n is equal to 3 my frames will be 3 the number of planes will be 3 because there are 3 bits right and it is red green and blue so one plane dedicated to every color so one plane for red second plane for green third plane for blue and likewise when i have a look at the binary code combination and the color combination so r is that is red is the msb blue is the lsb okay so we start writing from 0 0 0 till 1 1 1 okay as we have said the minimum color is black 
the maximum color is white and in between I have got different colors right and one color one or two examples I'll show you here red is 0 green is 0 blue is 1 which color blue red is 0 green is 1 blue is 0 which color green right so this is how you get different combinations when I have got a combination of um, a, a red and a green a red and a green will give me a yellow when my blue component is not there okay so this is the different combinations of rgb colors let's have a quick, quick look at the frame buffer organization i have an image 5 cross 5 so the frame buffer size is also 5 cross 5 for every plane and there are three planes since n is equal to 3 the first value is red the code is 0 but the binary is 0 0 0 so when the binary is 0 0 0 at the first location what am i going to store 0 0 0 right let's have a quick look at green green is 0 1 0 the code is 2 when i have got a green the value that i'm going to go is 0 1 0 so this is what happens when n is equal to 3 now we move on to frame buffer for 24 bit color value that's frame buffer for true color image that is been going on recently in your televisions and uh, ultra high definition televisions so true color image that is n is equal to 24 bits now please understand when n is equal to 24 bits one pixel represented using 24 bits now when n is equal to 24 bits and, it, and it's a color image i also know that it will be a combination of rgb so every plane every color will have eight bits since there are three colors rgb so 24 divided by 3 i'll have eight bits so every color will have 8 bit information now please have a look at this layout for red i've got 8 bits for green i've got 8 bits and for b i've got 8 bits now when i have for every color i've got 8 bits then how many combinations are possible 256 combinations 2 raised to 8 256 combinations of red 256 combinations of green 256 combinations of blue and such is the capacity of 24 bits so how many colors can you generate 2 raised to 24 colors in all that is what you can generate from a true color image that is the frame buffer organization for n is equal to 24 now to help you understand we are doing a quick analysis of the red plane how does it work basically as we said it is 8 bits for every plane red green blue we are showing you red plane here starting from red 0 to red 7 that is 8 planes for red color okay we try interpreting one so the values are 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 zero okay so we have written these eight values out here so what are these eight values these are the eight bits for a corresponding location now i hope you have understood how have i traced the location here okay so if i'm trying out for this i'll go by these values only so that is the location and what is the value that i'm getting 202 what is the maximum value that i can get 255 for red component similarly i can get the similar value for green component so for every rgb i'll have the max value as 255 as the value starts from zero so this is the basic interpretation of 24 bit color wherein i've got eight bits for red plane Okay, so this is all about frame buffer organization. Now, if you know this, you can design any frame buffer organization or for, for any number of bits per pixel. So, stay tuned and stay connected. My next session will be on raster scan and random scan display. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Home Learners, my LinkedIn profile, you could join. You could also send me your queries on my Gmail ID. Thank you. Stay safe, stay healthy.